the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold I'm it. I'm pretty. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. I shook up the world. Everybody stop talking now. Attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time when I beat Sonny Liston. I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. That's right. Then you might get me. I'm gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. George can't hit what his hands can't see. Now you see me, now you don't. He think he will, but I know he won't. They tell me George is good, but I'm twice as nice. And I'm gonna stick to his butt like white on rice. All I represent in my confidence. I am the greatest. I cannot lose. I'm pretty. And every man believes he's the greatest. Every man will like to be the greatest. Many want to say this, but they fear it. And they see this in myself and some hate me for it and some love me. So. I study life. I study people. And I'm educated on this. But when it comes to reading and writing, I'm not. I may be illiterate in that. But when it comes to common sense, when it comes to feelings, when it comes to love, compassion, heart, for people, then I, I'm rich. Yeah. I wrote something once that says, where is man's wealth? His wealth is in his knowledge. For if his wealth was in the bank and not in his knowledge, then he don't possess it because it's in the bank. You understand? My wealth is in my knowledge. I'm a spokesman for my people, and I'm gonna represent my people, and I don't wanna be a bad representative. I can't be blind, cause the blind lead the blind, they all fall in the ditch. What would you like people to think about you when you've gone? I like for them to say he took a few cups of love. He took one tablespoon of patience, one teaspoon of generosity, one pint of kindness. He took one quart of laughter, one pinch of concern, and then he mixed willingness with happiness. He added lots of faith and he stirred it up well. Then he spread it over a span of a lifetime and he served it to each and every deserving person he met. See, Ali, that's the only thing about Ali. When you were watching Ali get beaten up as an old man, even though I was a young kid, he's not going to quit. You got to kill him. He won't quit. Even he's, he was getting beat up every round, getting kicked out of my lab at home. And it's a champ. No, come on, let me out. Come on out. They wouldn't stop. He had to be, He would have to stay up there and just take the beating like a man. He, just, he wouldn't quit. In a way, I respect the guy like that so much. I have so much admiration for a guy like that so much, but it's just not right to do that way as a human being. Just say it's over. I'll come back and fight another day else. You got me. You know, and listen, um, I always like to think I'm a bad, but I don't give a f but um, that's a part of Ali. That's, that's where he overshines me because I can't understand a man that's willing to just really die for this. You know, and I talk that, but he, he's the real dick. Why does it make you emotional? Is it talking about him or the relation to you? Me, me, um, Ali's a giant. There's no way other fighters can match him. He'll die for this shit, he'll die. I'm not gonna die for that. No, I wanna say something right here. You all might, this might make y'all think. Life is not really long. Let's say the average person, 30 years old. If you're 30 years old, you are not but about seven years old. How can I prove it? Add up all the seven, eight, nine hours you slept for 30 years. Out of 30 years, out of all the nights, last night when you went to bed and woke up this morning, you don't remember a thing. You've been unconscious for about eight years. If you're 30 years old, you slept about eight years. Okay, how much traveling have you done in 30 years? From the television station to home, to another country, to another city, to school, to church. You've probably traveled two years your life or spent just getting back and forth to where you're going. So there's eight years of sleeping, two years of traveling, that's 30 years out of your life before you accomplish anything. How long do you sit in school? In America, we stay in school from the first grade to 12th grade. Six hours a day for 12 years, break it down, you sit in a classroom for three years without leaving. Okay, two years of traveling, eight years of sleeping, three years of school. How many movies have you went to? How many wrestling matches? How much entertainment? How many movie theaters, live plays? baseball games, probably two years of entertainment. So by the time a man, you older people know him, bear with us, I'm saying, by the time you have children, by the time you have uh, made a way for your children, by the time you pay for your home, you push pushing 60 years old. So life is real short. 
My head got big and I started thinking it was my training camp and my boxing ability that kept me where I was at and God punished me and he gave me a good whooping. He broke my jaw in the second fight and he got me whooped and knocked down in the Frazier fight. And I realized I wasn't that great after all. So I had to get not only together physically, but spiritually. For this fight, I prayed every day for five days, five times a day for the past uh, uh, four months. And everything is perfect. And if Allah's with me, it ain't no way no man can win. No way! Because I'm representing God. I'm representing the freedom of black people in America. I want to be the one black man who stands up and look at white people and tell the truth, who don't sell them out, who don't uncle dumb, who don't promote cigarettes, don't promote whiskey, take his fame to uplift his little brother in the ghetto. Everybody has a purpose in life. Everybody has a destiny. And... The knowledge of that destiny enables one to fulfill it. See, so everything was put here for purpose. Ants, buzzards, trees, and it's the knowing of that purpose that enables every man to fulfill it. And, uh, and life begins when a person realizes his purpose in life. Very few people uh, know how to go about finding what's the best purpose in their life that they should try to fulfill. And mine was just to be the world heavyweight champion. And then also not only being the champion, but keeping my dignity, my pride, my manhood, not Uncle Tom as, as they say, selling out my people just for the white man's dollar. So this is my purpose, to go down as the one, the first one just about to go all out and all the way and being clean with the sport and, and not representing nothing like tobacco and whiskey and various commercials and stand with my people and representing everybody and at the same time not disowning my own, marrying my own kind and, and socializing with my own kind. But I belong to the world as far as being the champion, but I let it be known that I am black and I will always be black and with black, even if I mean give up all the money and everything that I can be offered from boxing. We treat each other, how do we help each other? So. I'm going to dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I want to see it. Because we live how long? 80 years? The odds are everybody in this room, some of you are going to be dead 20 years from now. Some of you are going to be dead 50 years from now. Some are going to be dead 30, some are going to be dead 60, 70 years ago. We are going to die soon. And if you live to be, say, 125 years old, which we don't do, right? Let's say we live to be 250, and you can have sex for 145 of those years. You're going to come to the end after that. So, we don't have it about 80 years on earth. This is a test to see where will we spend our life in heaven and hell. This is not the life now. Your real self is inside you. Your body gets old. Some of you go to look at the fridge, look old. you don't have no teeth. Your hair is leaving you. Your bodies get tired. But your soul and your spirit never die. That's going to live forever. So your body is just housing your soul and spirit. So God is testing us on how we treat each other, how we live, to see where our real home be in heaven. So this physical stuff don't last for so long. So my car, this building is gonna be here when the man who built it dead. There have been many kings and queens of England, they're all dead. After this one is gone, another one will come. So we don't stay here, we're just trustees. We don't own nothing. So what am I saying? The most important thing about life is what's gonna happen when you die. And Cassius Clay has won after six rounds and there's the chance. Cassius is not my name no more. You want to keep calling me a white man's name? I'm not white. Continues to scream at Terrell. He beat the hell out of those who didn't want to use his name. When you were a kid, you always bet certain fellas, I'm going to be champion one day. And when I'm champion, I'm going to come back and show you I'm wrong. Another said, guys, I'm going to be a great doctor one day. And I'm going to be a dentist. I'm going to be a great scientist. I'm going to be a president of the country. And but very few people actually are able to make good of the boats and come home and say, I told you. Muhammad Ali, one of my great heroes, had a great line in the 70s when he was asked, how many sit-ups do you do? He said, I don't count my sit-ups, I only start counting when it starts hurting. When I feel pain, that's when I start counting because that's when it really counts. That's what makes you a champion. Injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. 
He's a fool. I'm not a dog. I prove that Allah is God. Fake like... all of us, okay? <laughs> so go look at you. How <sighs> 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 you out, son? <laughs> I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of it, bow. I'm going to fight for the prestige, not for me, but to uplift my little brothers who are sleeping in concrete floors today in America. Black people who are living on welfare. Black people who can't eat. Black people who don't know no knowledge of themselves. Black people who don't have no future. Cassius, how do you feel today? Pretty good. How you doing? I hear you met Don Juan today. How was he? Yeah. He wasn't too friendly. What do you have to say? He didn't even shake my hand. What are you going to do about that? Now you must fall. <laughs> I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Watch this, some sudden punches. <laughs> Beating a big, bad monster who knocks out everybody and no one can whoop him. That's when that little Cassius Clay from Louisville, Kentucky came up and stopped Sonny Liston, the man who annihilated Floyd Patterson twice. He was going to kill me. You saw all the white people, the critics, the world had me ranked to go down. This was that man and Allah, God was with me and this man looked like nothing. I'm a poet. I'm a prophet. I'm the resurrector. I'm the savior of the Boston world. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. Sunday, if you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sunday. You, George Fullman, all of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. All of you, I know you got him. I know you got him, Dick. But the man's in cover. I'm gonna show you how great I am. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow.